Nasser Beydoun. Um, thank you, sir, for coming on. We get to the race in general and your, your, your own political prospects at a moment, but what about this political environment there? Uh, what did you make of that executive order that we just talked about uh, today from this president on his way to Michigan, signing this executive order that seems to be targeting West Bank violence? I think it's too, too little, too late. Hmm. I mean, instead of uh, promote, you know, signing a, a resolution to stop West Bank um, violence, they should have stopped the settlements. I mean, we should have had a policy in place to make sure Israel wasn't continuing to expand the settlements for the last 25 years since Oslo. I had a headline Washington Post here. It just put it up. To, it talks about Michigan's Arabs and Muslims are pushing to defeat uh, Biden in a critical state. And I wonder how real this is. Some Michigan Arabs and Muslims have launched an abandoned Biden campaign, part of a broader national movement still getting off the ground to ensure those in their community show up to cast their votes, but not for Biden. You're running as a Democrat in the primary, hoping to get to the general election. How real is this issue with Democrats in Michigan, especially in the Arab American community, and how upset are they with the president? I think it's very real. I think Joe Biden, if he is the nominee come 2024, that Donald Trump will be the next president of the United States. So how does it affect what you're doing? Uh, what type of campaign are you putting forward? There's some of the general election polling numbers, Trump versus Biden in Michigan. You're, again, you're running to try to get to the general election. We actually have a, one of the Republicans in the race next hour, Mike Rogers, who we've had on before. What's your message to voters there in this state, given what we've just talked about? My, uh, my message is end America's hypocritical policies around the world. Uh, wind down our endless wars overseas, invest money in America instead of wasting it on wars overseas. Uh, you know, that's a message and, you know, take a more balanced approach to the Arab-Israeli conflict. It's something that this president has not done. He's done the opposite. He's basically put his whole career in, in the hands of Benjamin Netanyahu. And I think he's going to be sadly disappointed hmm. when Benjamin Netanyahu, who has a history of, you know, stabbing people in the back, and he stabbed this president many times in the back. And the genocide that's happening in Gaza right now is all going to be to the detriment of Joe Biden winning the next election. And it, it might, in the, in the primary, I could see it as a very big issue it, it, for turnout. To your, which I think is the point you're making in the general, it might be a very big issue because it doesn't take much, as you know, in a swing state to kind of impact these things. But more broadly in Michigan, even though there are Democrats, those in the American community, see one of the polls that's up here with uh, one of the more recent polls with Trump leading over Biden in, the, in some of the key swing states, and that includes uh, the state uh, of Michigan, where he's up, up five in that poll. So in the general election, though, do Michigan voters more broadly kind of look at other issues, whether it be economic issues or even people that are, you know, more moderate or Republican leaning voters that maybe disagree with you on this and actually support the war effort of the president? So in other words, how broad is your 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 disagreement? How much how, how, how far does it spread across the state? In the Arab and Muslim community, I say if the vote was held today. Eighty percent of the community, maybe 90 percent of the community would not support Joe Biden. So they wouldn't show up to vote at all, or are many of they them? They will show up. Well, no, we're encouraging people to do, to show up and vote. Vote for people like me. Vote for other issues, local issues, local candidates. But the community has decided that after October 7th, that we will not support any candidate that doesn't support us. It might be. And when you have when you have 70 percent of the American population calling for a ceasefire, yet only four percent of Congress willing right. to utter those words because of apex dominance, then we have a problem. Well, say you're the country. nominee then for, for Senate. You know, that's what you want to be, right? So they come and they, you Correct. want them to vote for you. Who, who would they vote for on the, on the presidential line? Well, that's up to them to decide. You know, they could either not vote or some might even vote for Donald Trump. I might don't know. Might depress Really? They might go for Trump? I was going to say if they're Democrats and they agree with you, they might depress turnout. Isn't that a risk? Well, we've had, you know, you you got to remember that Donald Trump won Michigan in 2016. Yes. And he won it by Democrats voting for him. A lot of UAW members, a lot of uh, blue-collar workers, 
They supported him in 2016. Yeah, that was the so-called Reagan Democrats, Trump. that type of a, a group that went for him that time around, but then Biden took it last time around. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.